Hello, welcome to Treat's short course number 13. Rick told his boss he is working on the task force today and he's asked me to present this week's short course session to you. How do you like that? He's probably just got his feet kicked up and drinking some coffee while making me work. What a bum. But enough about my problems. This week we continue our talk about trends of system evolution without him. The topic itself is very large, but I will explain some of the methodology. Remember from the last video we learned that systems strive towards ideality. People evolve systems to increase their value by increasing their functionality and or decreasing their costs. We also discussed the idea that engineering systems evolve along an S-shaped curve similar to biological systems. It will start to evolve at a rapid rate where it will finally reach maturity. Eventually the system retires to be replaced by another system that can perform the function better. There are several tangible examples. Here's one. For home personnel computers, magnetic tape drives were a cheap, off-the-shelf solution to save programs. I remember when I was a simple Commodore 64 girl, I used to have this crush on an Atari 2600, all the times we had, but I digress. Tape drives gave way to large floppy drives. Floppy drives evolved through several versions but were finally replaced by compact disks. Compact disks are giving way to DVDs. DVDs are quickly submitting to flash memory USB drives. And on the evolution continues, each system is more functional and cheaper than the previous one. Soon, even I will be replaced just as I replaced Rick. Alts Huller and his three students went on to describe several paths that engineering systems can use to evolve. By knowing these trends you can predict the strengths and weaknesses of systems and more importantly make predictions on how the systems will evolve. Ehachu. Ehachu. Excuse me, I'm allergic to some of these smaller bits. Someone needs to check this hard drive for viruses. Wow, it is really difficult to breathe in here. When was the last time you had this thing defragged? The generic trends they discovered are valid for any system. Tennis rackets, cranes, computer chips, toothbrushes and razor blades. Unfortunately we don't have enough time in this short video to describe all the trends, however we will cover a few just to show you how the trends predict evolutionary moves. One trend that should be very familiar to you is called the monobipoly trend. This trend predicts that systems will evolve over time to go from a single unit to a double unit or by system and next to a poly or many system. We see this trend expressed in razor blades. One blade, two blades, three blades, four blades, five blades. You might also recognize this same trend in the current generation of microprocessors. Please don't tell anyone. Another easy trend to spot is called the dynamization trend. It predicts that systems will evolve from being a simple monolith, to one with a single joint, then one with many joints, then parts will become completely elastic, next there will be parts composed of liquid or gaseous materials, and finally parts will be replaced by the use of fields. A quick review of the evolution of the cell phone shows systems beginning to move through all of these stages. Daryl Mann a well-known experienced trees practitioner who has written several books has even developed a method describing ways to map the evolutionary landscape to exploit the evolutionary trends. But that is a topic for advanced trees users. Rick will post several evolutionary trend examples in his written blog. Your homework this week is to review those trends and see if you can spot real-life examples while you are out shopping or surfing the internet. Thank you, and have a wonderful week. Sheesh. First I have to clean his house. Now he wants me to do his movies too. A vacuum's work is never done.